What's up, everybody? Pete Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of Ranking the Albums. That's what we do on Sunday mornings here. In many cases, I have uh, friends on the channel who join me on these. Sometimes I do them by myself. Today, you got a solo show uh, for this kind of obscure band, but a really cool obscure band. Uh, they have five albums out. They've been around since the early 2000s. They are from Austin, Texas. Scott Berry, you need to be checking these guys out. The band is called Tia Carrera. And no, this is not Tia Carrera, the female singer and sometimes actress, right? Um, this is the power trio known as Tia Carrera. Uh, they are currently on Small Stone Records. They've been on various record labels over the course of their career. They got five full length studio albums out. And uh, I'm going to rank them in the order that I like them. This is a basic power trio, all instrumental, sto psychedelic stoner rock music, blues rock, but all instrumental, save for like one song uh, on their albums. Uh, but uh, yeah, guitar, bass, and drums on one album. They've got a little Leslie organ going on too as well, which adds a nice little kind of variety to the mix. But for the most part, it's just the three dudes. And who are those three dudes, you might be asking. Uh, we've got a guy named Jason Morales on guitar. This cat can play. Uh, I will say right off the bat, if you are a fan of Earthless, you're going to like this band. Very, eh, sort of similar. You know, lots of long guitar jams. Except with these guys, it's much more in the kind of like Robin Trower, Jimi Hendrix uh vein of like power trio blues rock right um basically jason morales i believe he plays mostly gibsons the little pictures i've seen he's playing either sg or les paul um fuzz pedal univibe pedal and a wawa pedal straight into whatever amp he's using whether it be orange or marshall amps i'm not quite sure uh and this guy can wail and he can deliver some big riffing too, but this isn't Doom. This is more like kind of like psychedelic stoner stuff. But there are some heavy riffs, some heavy blues rock things going on. But man, these are just like spacey, psychedelic, guitar-led jam freakouts, right? Uh, you got Eric Kahn on drums. Um, I believe all the albums, I believe he's been the drummer constantly throughout their career. Uh, and I think Andrew du Duplantis uh, is the current bass player, I think. I have to double check that, but I believe he is. Uh, but he's also been on most of the albums, or at least a chunk of them. But I'll, I'll list like who the, the different bass players and stuff are on the album. So five albums. I've got uh, hard copies of four of them. One of the others was only released uh, on vinyl and digital. But I also, on the brand, well, the most recent album, they also took the songs from that digital only released and put it on the back end of the CD. I'll talk about that when we kind of get to it. So, uh, but yeah. So, uh, like I said, I'm going to rank them as I like them here. And, um, oops, hold on one second. As I just kind of, my browser went kind of haywire on me here. Okay. So I'm going to start off with, uh, obviously, my number five, which is uh, this album right here. It's called The Quintessential. And it was released in 2009. This is their second album, Small Stone Records. Jason, Eric, and Andrew is the lineup for this particular album. So here, uh, here you've got like shorter psychedelic pieces mixed with these big, long, monstrous guitar jams. These guys do big, long, monstrous guitar jams. Uh, they're not afraid to put a couple 15 minute long songs or jams tracks on their album. They even have on one album, one that's over 30 minutes long. So you gotta like this sort of thing. But if you do like this sort of thing, you love guitar hero stuff, you like heavy, fuzz laden guitar music drenched with solos with wah wah and univibe. Like I said, it's like Robin Trower and Jimi Hendrix, but on steroids, obviously heavier, right? Um, that's kind of what this is. But this, so this is, this album's got a mix of all this stuff. So you get a track like Home, which is kind of like space rocky a little bit. And then uh, you get the, monstrous 22 minute the unnamed wholeness um and that kicks in and that's got uh, you know you got these rumbling drums i mean uh, eric is a really good drummer um then you got the, the, the guitar comes in you got fuzz and wah wah and univibe this guitar solos are just kind of shooting off into the heavens really cool stuff um and i love how like and they you know you got you have to when you're doing long 
tracks, long jams like these, you kind of have to mix things up a little bit. So like right during like the halfway point, things turn slightly funky and psychedelic, you know, and then kind of morph again towards the end of the song. Got to do that. I love the way they do it. Uh, Gypsies, it's a six minute scorcher. Um, sizzling Trower and Hendrix inspired solos, man. Just screaming wah wah solos. Just absolutely love it. Uh, and then you got the 15 minute long New Orleans, which is kind of like boozy, bluesy, hard rock, right? With some little bit of doom laden riffing here and there, but overall pretty, pretty bluesy. Um, wild solos from Jason again. Really good stuff. And then uh, you got Hazy Winter which is the last track, which is like an acoustic piece, uh, and Jason's singing on it. It's the only track with vocals on any of their albums. Um, and the way it's recorded, you can barely hear him sing. So it's almost like they just kind of threw this on as an afterthought. It's a nice enough little acoustic piece, but uh, the singing just doesn't make any sense to me because it's, it's so low in the mix. It's just like, why have it there? Overall, though, you know, some pretty good stuff on this album. Uh, actually, some really good stuff on this album. There's not a stinker in this catalog, but you just have to understand what you're getting into with this band. So you really have to like this sort of thing. I really like this sort of thing, right? You know, you guys know I'm a big Earthless fan. I know we've turned a lot of people on the channel onto Earthless. So if you dig Earthless and you want something like that, maybe a little heavier, maybe even more psychedelic sounding. You know, Earthless, I think, like Isaiah, I think, does a lot more kind of riffy stuff. But both bands just launch into these long guitar jams. You know, Jason is an amazing guitar player as well. So if you like the Earthless kind of blueprint, you're going to like this band. So yeah, that's my first pick here. Number five is uh, The Quintessential. And then I'm going to go on to number four. So number four, like I said, I don't have a physical copy because one was, ne was not released on CD. And that's uh, from 2019. Their fourth album is called Visitors slash Early Purple. The reason why it's called that is because there's only two tracks on the album. Uh, and it was Visitors and Early Purple. I think Visitors is 18 minutes and change. And Early Purple is like 16 minutes, so it's roughly 34 minutes worth of music on there. So it's like a two-song uh, album. Uh, only released digital and vinyl, all right, uh, and Small Stone Records was the, uh, the label for that. Um, Visitors is really good. It's all screaming lead guitar and fuzzy riffs over kind of like a steady drum beat. Um, Jason is just killing it on this album. And again, you've got uh, Eric Kahn on drums. On this album, you got bassist uh, Chris, I'm sorry, Kurt Christensen is on this particular album. Um, and I love how the song picks up the pace in the middle section uh, with the wah-wah kicking in. It's really intense. Just crazy screaming psychedelic stoner guitar solo. Just really, really good. And then you got Early Purple, which is much, much more spacey and groovy. Uh, you got the fuzz and the univibe kind of creating this like thick wall of like psychedelic sludge. Very, very cool stuff. Uh, if you love stoned out psychedelic guitar jams, this is an incredible album. 34 minutes of just non-stop action, right? Really, really good. So that's my number four. Fun album. Number three, I'm going to go with their debut album, which is uh, Tia Carrera. 2006. This is on Australian Cattle God Records. Let's see if I can get you any. Here's, here you got the Leslie, <laughs> Leslie cabinet right there. Right, it just says basically drums, electric guitar, electric bass guitar, Leslie organ, laptop. That's what we use to create this album. Uh, there they all are in the studio. Um, this is this is a wild album. I would not be surprised if people wanted to rank this one a little higher because this is uh, this is intense stuff. Again, Jason Morales, Eric Kahn, and Andrew Duplantis on bass. Uh, all start to finish, red hot psychedelic stoner rock guitar jams. Recorded live in the studio. Uh, fuzz, Univibe, Wah Wah. If you're a fan of Robin Trower, Jimi Hendrix, and Earthless, you will love this album. This is probably, out of all these records, the most intense. It's also the most kind of like live jam feel type of thing. Really good. Um, Tones, Levels, and THC, THC, which uh, kicks it all off. Great track. Monstrous opener, savage guitar tone. His tone on this album is just ridiculously good. Uh, East Side Jive, more of a blues rock jam. Cool Leslie organ thrown into the mix. I like the fact that they do that on this album. You don't really get that on the other albums, but nice little addition here. Uh, Carrera, faster paced. Especially the drums, really good. 
Wah Wah Univibe, laid on thick, really good song. Uh, you got the 10 Minute Valentine Blues, which is pretty damn terrific. Must hear for Jimi Hendrix fans. Really, really good. Scorching, psychedelic, spacey blues rock solos. Uh, Countdown Liftoff is really heavy, all right, but also spacey at the same time. It's got kind of doomy riffs, and you got like echoplex effects. You got all that spacey shit flying all over the place. You got fuzz, you got wah wah, univibe, using feedback, all this kind of stuff. Holy moly, really, really good. Really good stuff here. It basically throws everything but the kitchen sink in this particular track. Uh, at Altitude, another long one. Groovy drumming, loads of fuzz riffs and solos. And then you got uh, End Transmission, or End Transmission is the last track. And that just crushes. It's got these big, massive riffs. And then the wah-wah solos kick in. Uh, and a little bit more of that creepy organ. So you got, I think, organs on two tracks on this album. Killer album. Uh, like I said, but you got to be into these kind of like heavy jams to dig this stuff. But if you are... This is a great place to start. This kind of gives you everything you need to know about this band, although they would get a little more, more refined going forward. But still, the basically, you know, the, the formula of the band is pretty much the same. Uh, we're going to go next with uh, Cosmic Priestess from 2011. Cool album cover there, all right? <clears throat> Small Stone Records. Jason, once again, guitars. Eric Kahn on drums. A guy named Jamie Sims comes in playing bass, plays a little guitar. I think uh, er, uh, Jason also plays a little bit of... Um, bass on this album too uh slave cylinder great opener just crushes with some big beefy stoner doomy riffs then the wild wawa solos kick in of course you got sandstone and pearl 15 minutes long big psychedelic gem bluesy some great kind of trowerisms coming from jason you'll hear it uh when you listen to this guy solo and you'll think my god that's like that's like trower if he went like heavy rock right just really really good stuff uh saturn missile battery is 33 minutes long it's a 33 minute gem from outer fucking space uh loaded with intense drumming and then a, a boatload of riffs a boatload of solos a boatload of grooves but it never gets boring because they keep kind of changing. Let's let's throw a different set of riffs in here. Let's go solo in a different direction. It's just yeah, really, really good. It's 33 minutes. And it goes by. You just barely even realize that it was that long. It's just uh, intense, intense stuff. Uh, and then you got Closer. Uh, a Wolf in Wolf's Clothing is kind of funky, kind of bluesy. Nice change of pace for them on this album. After that big, long, gargantuan, long jam, you get this kind of funky, groovy type thing, which is really cool. And, and uh, he's using some clean guitar tones on that one, which I think is really interesting that he doesn't do that on any of these other uh, songs on these other albums. So, yeah, really cool album. A lot of variety on here. Great playing. It's my number two. Could have been my number one. But my number one is their fifth and most recent album, Tried and True. So what's cool about this, if you get the, uh, God, what year did this come out? Uh, twenty. Well, it came out in 2020, so I'm assuming the CD issue of this on Small Stone tacks on at the end Visitors and Early Purple from the other album, which was never released on CD. So it's like, uh, so you have it on here, so that whole album is attached to the end of this one, which is pretty neat, right? So in a sense, you do have that album, it's just on its own. Uh, or, yeah, tacked on to the end of uh, Tried and True. So here... Um, What's really good about this album is I think this album is trying to be a little bit different. So they're going for more kind of riffy type arrangements, whereas most of the other tracks on all the other albums are very loose. They're just these, you know, crazy jams, right? You do get lots of jams here, but they're more based on riffs and somewhat of a more stable song structure. So like Layback, which is the opening track, I mean, that's got a killer riff and a groove and it kind of repeats throughout the song and i could see this one if they wanted to a song like that could have had vocals in it that it's so so yeah so like they i think these guys never really thought about doing more vocal oriented stuff kind of like earthless right earthless did the one album with vocals right but that's that's never their thing but i could see like a tune like layback or if they were going to do stuff like that in the future i could totally see like vocals coming in there um taos is the next track really thick fuzz on that one and the soloing is just totally intense. Then you got a track called Swing and Wing, which could almost be like a groovy Black Sabbath song. And the riff is just absolutely crushing. And the wah-wah guitar solo is just like, lay everything in its waist, just scorch the freaking earth and leave burn marks. Amazing stuff. Uh, Zen and the Art of 
Thunderstorms is a blistering track, but it's really short. It's like just over a minute long. I would have liked to have heard more. It's mostly a guitar solo. Really, really good. Uh, it's got feedback and all sorts of great shit. It's very, very cool stuff. And then uh, the closer, tried and true, the title track is 14 minutes long. Pulverizing drums, man. He's just going off. Eric is just going, doing ballistic here on the drums. Uh, and then just amazing fuzz-soaked guitar solos. Really strong album. And then once you tack on Visitors and Early Purple, this is this becomes like a really great album. This is like an easy choice for number one for me. But I love all of them. I love all of them. Yeah, and even though it's before I said this is a very close number two, but I think when I really thought about it, it's like this, this I like this one the best. But they're all really great. I would say start wherever you want to start here because none of these, uh, they're all really strong albums. And uh, But again, you got to know what you're getting involved in. This is loads and loads and loads of psychedelic freak-out, stonerific guitar jams. And uh, with a wild, wild-ass guitar player, you know, Jason Morales, who's just uh, is a guy who needs to be talked about more. So if you are a fan, if you know who these guys are, I know there's probably a few of you out there, uh, let us know what you think of these albums and how you would rank them. And I believe they have a new album coming out this year like in the, over the next couple months. I was almost going to wait on this, but then I was like, ah, I've waited kind of long enough, and I, based on certain circumstances, I needed to do a ranking show on my own due to time restrictions, and I figured this would be good to do. But, you know, of course, if they do release an album uh, fairly soon, we will review it here on the channel. But, uh, yeah, if you know these, rank them as you like them down in the comments below. Tia Carrera, very, very cool band. They've got a band camp page up. You can go check out most of this stuff. I'll try and drop some links below. And uh, if you've never heard them, Go check them out. Let us know what you think. And visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube all together all the damn time. Please subscribe if you haven't already and click on that notification bell so you get alert of all of our content as it posts. And please do hit the like button before you leave. Also down below, we got the links to our Ko-Fi page, our channel donations, our merch page, and our Cameo page. Thank you in advance for all your support there. And we'll see you next week here on Ranking the Elms. We've got a fun one for you next week. It's going to be a little bit different. It's still going to be a rank in the album show, but it's more based on songs. Let me explain. Uh, so Mike Antonelli, my good friend Mike Antonelli, Mr. Dr. Poppy Jazz is coming back on the channel. We're going to be doing another show together. And uh, we're going to be doing the show on the sax legend Michael Brecker, the late great Michael Brecker. Of course, one half of the Brecker brothers alongside his uh, brother Randy. Michael Brecker has done tons of solo albums and appeared on so many other records and songs throughout his career. So what Mike and I have decided to do is pick our 10 favorite Michael Brecker as Sideman appearances, right? Where Michael comes and guest stars on an album and we've eat, what we've done is we picked out like 10 songs that are featured on an album by another artist and we're going to kind of rank those um, and uh, talk about the albums they come from and how, you know, how much of an impact Michael made on one song in specific. So it's basically where we're kind of ranking our 10 favorite Michael Brecker appearances in songs, but we're going to kind of tie it into the albums that they're on as well. So these won't be Michael Brecker solo albums and they won't be Brecker Brothers albums. These will be albums that he had appeared on by various other artists across all sorts of different genres, right? So it's going to be kind of a fun show, something a little different. We've never really done anything like this before. So, uh, so yeah, that's coming up next week here on Ranking the Albums. And uh, in the future, we've got, uh, I'll be ranking the albums of Creator. Uh, I'm gonna, Grant Arthur and I are going to circle back and do a Bad Finger. We've got uh, other things on the kind of long-term docker. We've got uh, Jamie Laszlo, Karen LaPrezios, and myself will be ranking the albums of Yob. Uh, Ryan Scow and I have talked about ranking the albums. We're doing a top 10 for Sodom, German thrash legends. So that's also in the works. Uh, Ryan and I also have talked about doing the albums of, ranking the albums of Autopsy. You know, we had Chris from Autopsy on the channel not that long ago, so we want to circle around and do that. I'm sure we could pull uh, Ralph into that as well. And, uh, Geez, I have a whole other list of things, and of course, I you know trying to think about all the ones that are that are on the long list because there's a lot, lot more. Uh, I I probably got like 30 ranking the album shows uh, listed on my to do list that uh, we'll be starting to tackle one at a time over the next uh, week, over the coming weeks and months. So a lot happening. So uh, stay tuned for all that and more. Uh, also coming up, uh, I'm doing a very cool show with Rich Catino in the very near future, where we're going to be talking about, and it probably will be a series about the new wave of traditional heavy metal. These are these young bands that are coming out and they're doing like traditional style 80s metal. And uh, we'll be talking each episode, we'll be talking about and, and highlighting five of them at a clip. 
uh, very, very cool younger bands that need your attention for those who just love classic metal, right? And there, that's the style that they're doing. So uh, we've got uh, the five pick for the for the first episode that'll be coming up pretty soon. And uh, yeah, lots of stuff going on, as you can see. So uh, thanks for watching, everybody. I am P. Pardo. Have a good one. Enjoy the Super Bowl for those here who watch it or wherever you might be if you're a Super Bowl fan. Enjoy it, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow for another episode of albums that are 40 years old in 2024. And then Tuesday, of course, we've got uh, In the Proxy. So till then, I'm Pete Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.